Hey guys, it's Chris with Not The Real World. Today I'm going to show you how to tie this jointed saltwater popper that I use for a lot of fish in saltwater including tarpon, snook, redfish, bluefish, stripers, uh, jacks, roosterfish, you name it. If something's really aggressive, uh, like a barracuda would really go after these. I'm actually tying these for order now. Uh, this is a great fly for them. This is about a six inch long fly. Uh, what we are using to tie this is a tail of bucktail, any flash you want, um, chocolates, uh, articulated big game shank in 28 millimeter, uh, the surface seducer double barrel popper heads in large, uh, which is made by Flyman Group. Um, I put an Umpqua U-Series hook on it, 2 aught. Uh, that size is the U401. Um, then we're going to use some, um, this is called Palmer Chenille. And then we're also going to use some uh, UV Palmer chenille um, and go ahead and get uh, all that wrapped up for the body there. All right, look forward to tying it. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do to get this head onto that body or that shank is make a hole in this thing. Uh, this is the easiest way I've found to do it is by placing a bodkin in your vise. Uh, from a safety perspective, you don't want to jam yourself with it. Uh, then you slide it all the way down. Um, through it's gonna pop through make sure that hole is centered it is okay there we go I've got that hole then what we go ahead and do is take the shank itself oh, I've already got one here this guy um, I like to have the uh, fatter end there's a thinner thinner looped end on this and there's also a fatter one I like to have the fatter one towards the back for where the hook is gonna be attached I'm going to go ahead and put this in my vise, and what I'm going to do is just work this on there. You can squeeze these popper bodies, and they will actually return to shape. It's a great little product by Flyman. And you kind of just work it to that hole that you created, that little tunnel there, and it's going to finally pop on. You'll see this thing fits on this shank perfect lengthwise. Um, you've still got plenty of room to tie on at the eye there. Uh, and then so what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull it back off. I'm going to get that 2 aught hook here. I'll take that 2 aught hook. I'm going to slide it onto this shank. It wants to go. A little trick here is you put it in the vise and you can actually pull down, open up a little bit of space there, and it will go ahead and slide right on. Uh, it doesn't matter if that uh, piece is on top or on the bottom. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and put this back in the vise there. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap a thread base. Um, this is just flat wax nylon. It really doesn't matter what you use because um, all this is going to get covered up. Color doesn't matter. As you can see, I'm using red on a chartreuse fly here. What I'm doing is just giving a quick little base here, locking this thing in, so then I can throw some super glue on it to hold the fly. Okay. No need for any special whip finish or anything like that. I go ahead and cut that off. And then what I am going to do is take some of this crazy glue. It's just the brushable kind. And I'm going to get my head ready because I want to, once I lather it on there, I want to be able to slide it on pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead, just brush this on. Pretty good amount. Cover it all up. Like that. I'm going to slide this head on pretty quick. Go ahead and make sure it's set. We're all good to go. That thing's just going to take a moment to dry, but you can see why it's important to go ahead and poke it through first 
Um, otherwise, you're going to be spending time like trying to work it on there, and that super glue will set, and then you're stuck with the head halfway on that shank. So there's the articulation part, uh, and then we'll go from there and tie into, or excuse me, tie on the tail. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that uh, right there. And I'm going to go ahead and just take some thread, wrap all the way down the shank. And you can use kind of whatever tail you want, uh, the variety of different materials. I'm using bucktail. Let me grab my bucktail. Um, I like to use natural bucktail. Uh, another great product that would go with this for if you were doing a really toothy fish like a barracuda would be like their Flyman's Faux Bucktail. Uh, but you can take a pretty healthy amount here, uh, depending on what type of profile you want. Cut it off. Go ahead and tie in. Uh, and of course, this can help determine your length of your fly. Um, this is going to be for some bigger fish, some jacks. So these guys are big fish going after big flies. Um, I'm going to make this one pretty long, probably six, seven inches with the tail and everything. Uh, so just tie that down. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and get some flash. Just going to use some of this darker green and gold flash on top. It really doesn't matter what type of flash you want to use. Um, you can go ahead and pull off a pretty good amount of that as well, depending on what you're fishing for. Again, I'm fishing for jacks with these, so they are my clients will be. So uh, making commotion and putting the fly in the water so the jacks can see it are of utmost importance. So I'm going to use a lot of flash. Um, some folks have asked me if they put hackles in this on the tail. Um, I don't put hackles in only because they seem to break really easily, um, but there is this flash that's uh, this clear flash of you that's barred that actually looks a lot like a grizzly feather. Um, that's a great one to run on the side of this instead of an actual grizzly feather. It's easier to tie into, still gives a scaled effect for the fish. So tie it on my side first. Only, that's only out of habit. Don't mean to ignore you guys in the video. Okay, um, I'm a big fan of making my flies as tough as possible. I imagine you guys probably are too. Uh, what I like to do is then take this super glue and I go ahead and actually coat this with super glue just to toughen it up a little bit, um, give it some extra strength there uh, for what you may want to do. Put that down. We are going to use. Somebody stole my chartreuse. There it is. So this is actually UV polar chenille. This is the gold UV one. I said UV palmer chenille. That's incorrect. Uh, I'm tying in UV palmer chenille. And I'm going to show you guys a little trick here that makes a really cool tough body. So I'm tying this in. I'm going to take my palmer chenille. You guys can do this with as many different colors as you want. I prefer two. I haven't done it with more than three. Four gets to be kind of a mess. Um, I've attempted it with four, but it's just too much. But uh, two is really good. So I've got chartreuse. I've got gold UV. I'm going to go ahead and tie them both in. And the one thing that's tough about this fly is you got to wrap around this head. It's kind of frustrating, but it's just part of the part of the game of tying with this. I haven't figured out a better way to do it. I'm going to leave about seven, eight inches of this stuff cut off. 
tie in and cut off at seven or eight inches. What we're going to do with the ends of them is take end of it. And if you use hackle pliers, it's really easy. I'm not going to use hackle pliers. I'm just going to twist with my fingers. You can go ahead and twist this material. I like to kind of work my fingers on it uh, to keep it sticking out. And you keep twisting this material up, and it's going to kind of blend together. Make this really cool brush, if you will, that you can use. You're going to make the body out of. So the chartreuse shorter fibers are kind of blended there into the longer gold and UV. And then we're going to advance our thread up here. To the front of this hook again dealing with the head it's just kind of the thing you got to deal with there um, and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap this and be very careful to stroke these fibers back um, sometimes I do put down a fresh coat of super glue um, and I'll probably actually do that here just to make this fly as strong as possible um, but you got to be careful because that super glue will catch those fibers and it will um, kind of bind them down, obviously, glue them down to the fly, the body of the fly. Um, but this is just going to make it extra tough for these fish to tear these apart. Sorry, I'm bumping the camera there. Got a little tripod. Head and the thread to work around is a bit of a pain. Just kind of keep working these fibers out with your fingers. Sometimes it gets too twisted up, particularly near the end here that you've been holding. Um, and this probably seven and a half inch length is just about perfect to finish this fly out. The body on it. I'm gonna tie off the two pieces there. Okay. I'm going to kind of flare this out. I'll then take my bodkin and see if I can pick any of this stuff out. A lot of times it gets wrapped down, um, particularly since I threw the super glue on there. It sometimes gets glued down. But you can kind of pull some of these pieces out just to make a little bit thicker body. Um, and I actually won't even cut off that excess there. Well, you can if you want. It depends on what you want to do. Um, let's see how it looks. It kind of blends right in on top, so I'll just leave it there. Get us a nice little head here. It's a pretty good little body there. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple half hitches over this. clip off going to go ahead and super glue those thread wraps again I want this fly to be as tough as possible and boom your body is done all you got to do left is do eyes. So again, this is a heck of an awesome fly. A um, lot of commotion in the water. These double barrel poppers put so much motion in the water. They pop really, really hard. Um, you can also tie this with their new howitzer baitfish heads. I'll probably do a video on that as well. I uh, just haven't gotten my order in on those yet, but these, uh, these work really, really well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the fly to grab right there. We'll go ahead and take some eyes. Um, these are just standard round eyes, the red. I don't know. I'm just feeling red on this. 
Um, I will also take a little bit of this super glue, dab it in here, and on the other side in that eye cavity there, go ahead and set that eye in. Uh, it's really useful to use the end of the bodkin like this to make sure it's set. I've stuck my finger in there and then it gets stuck and won't come back out. Um, and if you want, you could put like some UV glue, Loon Hardhead or something over that eye in there to make it recessed even stronger over the recess so it doesn't pop out. Um, but the fish probably aren't going to care too much. And that right there is a big saltwater popper.